So if you're gonna take the SAT subject test in physics, you need to watch this video first. I'm gonna talk about how you can get an 800 relatively easy, at least a 700 worst case scenario. Talk about the test, some strategies, the topics on this test, and why if you've taken AP Physics 1, you almost like have to take this test. It's gonna be a freaking layup. So as an AP Physics 1 teacher, I get asked all the time, like, should I take the SAT? Well, I mean, you really should, but the problem that comes in and why it's kind of annoying is it doesn't always line up with the course. You know, I know right now with what's going on, they're going to be offering it more frequently to kind of catch up with what's been going on. But generally it's like in the fall. So you either have just started the course or you finished it last May, or it's like right in the summer. The timing is just bad. So the first thing I tell students and what I'm going to tell you is if you take an AP Physics 1, you are off to an amazing start, but that's not it. You are going to have to self-teach yourself a little bit, not a ton, and I give you all the videos and things that you are going to need right here on this channel. If you look through the thumbnails, I always put like SAT Physics in the thumbnail if it's relevant to that test. So you can just look through, I make playlists for it. So just, it's not gonna be hard to self-teach it, but you're definitely gonna have to put in some time. So first, let's get to know the test. The test is one hour. One hour of your time, 75 multiple choice questions, there's five choices, and guys, it's scratch the level, entry level stuff. It's nothing crazy. It's, do you know the basics that you need to know about each topic, and let's move on, right? It's easier as far as conceptually than AP Physics 1 could ever be, but there's just more content to learn, and there's some other things that kind of stink about it as well. There's no calculator, which is good and bad, right? Some people depend on a calculator, but there's just general things, general algebra, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, nothing crazy. But I think the biggest one, I think the one that makes kids the most scared <laughs> is there's no reference table. You are going to have to memorize formulas, and I thought about making a video of all the formulas that you need to memorize for the SAT physics. Let me know in the comments down below if you want me to make that video, and I'll list all of the ones that you should probably know going into that test, but you are not going to get a reference table. It's scaled between 200 and 800, and I'll tell you, like, after the raw score and how the points are broken down, I'll tell you exactly how you get that 700, which is considered an outstanding score, and an 800, which I've had many, many students do in the past. So you're pretty much just gonna have to recall facts, understand principles and concepts and things like that, and you get one point for getting the answer right, you lose one quarter for getting it wrong, and then that's like, I guess, the guess penalty, they call it, and then you get zero if you don't answer it at all. Right, so that's very similar to how the SAT works. The topics covered on the test, mechanics, that's like 40%, 30 questions or so, and it pretty much aligns right with AP Physics 1. So if you took AP Physics 1, there's 40% of the test that you already know. 20% of it is gonna be electricity and magnetism. The magnetism part, a lot of AP Physics teachers don't go into it. Also, parallel plate capacitors, that's not really talked about that much in AP Physics 1. So those are two things that you're gonna to need to teach yourself and videos that I've made for you if you're gonna be taking the test and wanna get an 800. 20% is waves and optics, so that's 15 questions or so. Once again, there's gonna be some stuff that you need to self-teach, mostly like uh, optics, like ray optics, reflection, refraction, Snell's law. That stuff is not talked about uh, in AP Physics 1 that much, as well as you know physical optics like mirrors, lenses, pinhole cameras. Those are not talked about in AP Physics 1 either. Heat and thermo and modern are about six questions each, not talked about in AP Physics 1. And the miscellaneous that they sprinkle some questions in on the end, you, you get that from AP Physics 1. So we see that from AP Physics 1 going in, you know about 60% of the test so far, 60 to 65% just by finishing AP Physics 1. If you are a three student in AP Physics 1, then you are already at 600 on the SAT Physics, all right? you If you wanna go above 600 up to that 700, you're just gonna have to do a little bit of work and pick up that other 30 to 40%. Now I'll tell you my jam for studying, making videos, everything, and I'm not sponsored by them, I'm just telling you the resources that are best, guys. This right here, this is what I use. This is like, when I make my videos, when I take notes, this right here is what I use. I'll leave a link for it in the description. If you're gonna take the test, good idea to get this. It gives you online resources. It gives you practice tests. It, it gives notes. It's, this is a very, very good resource. I think right now it's going for like 21 bucks. And you can get a used one. I think this one uh, is for 20, 20, 20, 21. The test isn't gonna change. So like if you didn't wanna spend 20, you could probably find like a $10 one somewhere on Amazon or something like that. 
but I would highly recommend it. Princeton makes one. I've checked out a couple, but the Barron's one seems to be the most accurate, especially when I talk to students who have taken the test after, and they said that this was the jam that they go with. So these, this is pretty much where I get all of my material for. If you're gonna take the test, I recommend get it, use it, and then find a friend that wants to take it and sell it to them for five bucks and get some of your money back. Or just keep it because if you're taking this, you're probably gonna take physics again in the future. That's not a bad resource to have. Here's how you get the 800, all right? First, the strategy. Do a multi-pass. Go through the test a bunch of different times. 75 multiple choice questions, a lot of them you're just gonna be able to read and answer. And I say that you go through, and this is how I've taken the test and how I tell the kids I tutor to take the test as well. Go through and get all the one points. The ones you know, no questions asked. But while going through, mark the ones that are like 50-50 and mark the ones that you have no idea. Mark them differently. So when you come back for the second pass, now we're gonna go through those 50-50. And you're gonna decide as a 50-50 choice, a lot of the times, if you're down to 50-50, like there's five multiple choice questions, if you can narrow it down to two and pick one or the other, right? You have to get those wrong four times for it not to be worth it. So if you can get to 50-50, I highly recommend, even for that quarter of a point loss, if you get it wrong, take the gamble on the 50-50 choice and answer that question. And the ones that you have no idea, guys, leave them. Because if you have no idea, those will in fact hurt you more than they will help you. Now there shouldn't be a ton of these that you have no idea, but you know, four or five that you have no idea, that that's okay, right? The test doesn't want you to be an expert in physics. It wants to know that you have a very good general grasp on the general concepts and principles of physics. And another thing, because this is like not a high school course and like you're not getting graded for like school or something, don't waste your time if you're gonna cram for this test. You, you cannot cram, you must start studying early. It, it, I'm, I'm sorry, there's just too many, for one, formulas that you need to know, right? You can't cram all the formulas and memorize them correctly. So if you're gonna cram for the test, then don't even waste your time, don't even sign up. <laughs> like, if it's like three weeks away and you're like, oh, I'm gonna figure this out, I would probably take a month, even two months out to make sure that you're okay. The next test right now is August 29th. If it runs due to everything going on right now, I, I haven't actually looked, but last I checked last week, it was still running. You just came out of AP Physics 1, you, you're pretty good. In the next month, you could probably prepare. But there's one in September as well. So if you don't wanna cram because you're, you're living your best life over summer, let's go, then start now and take it in September. But you cannot cram. You will not get a 700 or an 800 if you cram for this test. More strategy while taking the test, guys, write on the test. Write drawings, sketches, tables, formulas. You're allowed to write on the test for a reason. It's a benefit. Draw pictures. It'll help you, I promise. Also, leading up to the test, take practice tests. Like I said, get in here, take practice tests. There's also some online if you don't wanna buy the book. You don't have to buy the freaking book. But take tests and focus on the ones you get wrong, but don't forget the ones you've done right. If you're a student and you've taken the SAT a few times, you hear this story all the time. I did really, really well on math and crappy on English, so I studied my ass off in English, and then I took it again, and I did really, really good in English, but my math score went down and I ended up getting the same total score, right? Focus on what you got wrong, but don't forget why you got these ones right. Breeze through these, refresh them, focus on when you get wrong, so we could keep this one up here and then bring up our weaknesses to get that 700, 800 score that we want. Now, generally speaking, because they don't publish like statistics on what gets an 800 and such like that, but from what I've read and from information that's out there, if you get a raw score of like 65 to 75, and here's what I mean. So you get one point for getting them right and you get a quarter for losing it. So essentially that gives you a window of 10 points off. Now that could be 10 zeros and then you got 65 right, or that can be, you know, a bunch right and just a couple wrong. Right? How you figure out your raw score? One point for the ones you got right, take minus the quarter point for the ones you got wrong. You're gonna be looking for a 65 to a 75 to get an 800. That's it, you get a 65 to a 75, you get an 800, and 65 is like 87%, which is like a B plus, right? You get an 800, you're a student. So if you're an A student, maybe physics one, couple weeks of studying, just get that 800, hour worth of your time, do it. And all the way down to 700, which is also considered a very, very good score, you can get a 45, which is like 60%. So even with AP Physics, you can walk out of AP Physics right now and pretty much get a 700 if you are an A student, right? An A student in AP Physics one that takes the test 
with no other self-teaching, you're probably gonna get between that 650 and 720 range. Like I said, do a little bit more work, get 800 on this thing. It looks good, it also refreshes you, keeps you going. If you're gonna be an engineer student, if you're gonna go into any of the sciences in physics, engineering, things like that, this is a test that you should have on your resume and it's not that hard, but with physics being a grueling subject and there being so much topics and so many formulas, take it now while it's fresh in your brain, right? Don't come back to it in a year when you're at the end of your senior year or if you took physics as a, a sophomore, come back to it later on when you've forgotten stuff and make more work for yourself. Take it now while it's fresh in your head, while I'm making videos for you, while I'm here to answer questions for you, take the test. If you've taken the test, leave in the comments below any strategies, anything I missed, was I right, was I wrong? Like, let me know how you did. I'm curious. Good luck on the test, guys. I'll see you on the next one.